Welcome back to the Biostock Life Science Summit. And I am here with Idrogen CEO, Anders Carlson, who is about to present his company. Welcome, Anders. Thank you, Cecilia. Uh, my name is Anders Carlson, and I am the CEO of Idrogen. Uh, we are based here in Lund, and we are developing telogenic uh, cell therapy. We are listed on the NASDAQ First North and has been there since June uh, 4th uh, this year. The agenda for today, I want to give you a short introduction to our technology platform, uh, discuss our key activities for the, this year and the past year, and also looking forward to talking about our priori prioritized pro projects and also key activities for the upcoming year. And finally, give a few words about our uh, rights issue that is rolled out today. Uh, our technology is targeting uh, conditions and diseases when the immune system has become your enemy. It can be when um, the immune system has developed anti-drug antibodies and uh, uh, is attacking biological drugs and hampers their effect. It can also be after transplantation where we normally have a long-term need of immunosuppressant treatment. Otherwise, the, uh, the body and the immune system will re reject the graft. Uh, other conditions is all these autoimmune diseases where the immune system erroneously attacks the body's own cells and tissues. And in all these conditions, we seek to turn off these unwanted attacks from the immune system with our technology. We have developed a uh, platform technology uh, with our telogenic cell therapy. We have also applied for patent and we are aiming uh, for a 20 years of market exclusivity until 2040. We are focusing on three major projects. It's IDO8 targeting hemophilia A. It's IDO-T targeting kidney transplantation with living donor and finally also IDO AID, which is targeting uh, the autoimmune diseases. To give you an introduction to the mode of action of our technology, you need to understand the key role that the dendritic cells are playing in the immune response. The dendritic cells has the role to identify friends or foes within the system and via Intolerant dendritic cells, it is activates immune response when needed via the effector T cells. Via tolerant dendritic cells, it also are able to downregulate immune responses using regulatory T cells, the peacemakers in the system. And they are very important for our technology as such. There is a lot of cells and bacteria and molecules that our system needs to sort out. And if it looks like this, when you target virus and bacteria as enemies and pharmaceuticals needed uh, as friends, then there is not a problem. But when you see this, when the immune system targeting uh, treatment, important biological treatment as enemy, then we have a problem. And what our system do at that time is to reprogram the immune system very specifically targeting the specific antigen that is initiating this unwanted immune response and create a very specific tolerance. That is what we're doing with our telogenic cell therapy. We are you, you having a ta uh, tailor-made um, treatment for the patients. We are collecting the monocytes from the patient at the uh, local hospital. We are then sending uh, the monocytes to our GMP facility and there we introduce the disease-specific antigens with our patent patentable tolerance and user and outside the body uh, processing the cells to be disease-specific telogenic dendritic cells. And this is actually uh, our uh, telogenic cell therapy, which we are then sending back 
to the local hospital and treat the patients bi-weekly with three to four injections. A very important milestone it was last year when we signed a manufacturing agreement with Radboud University Medical Center in the Netherlands. They are world leading in manufacturing cell therapy based on dendritic cells. And we have now performed uh, tech transfer into Radboud. We have also initiated the development of the cell therapy to be used for our clinical trial for IR8 that is started in second half of next year. If you look into very important milestones the past years, we in June the past year announced our new upgraded tolerance inducer. We signed the agreement with Radboard as I mentioned, but also we applied for patent uh, in December which is now possible to give us 20 years of future market exclusivity. For this year, there has been a lot of focus on IDO8, which is the main project ongoing right now. We have performed the tech transfer. Uh, we are also doing preparation for the clinical phase, uh, one for two study. We are doing regulatory discussions with authorities in Sweden, Norway, Finland, Denmark. We are also performing preclinical documentation and also updating our patent application which is also a very critical and important part of the work is also to continue to update our potential partners, big pharma companies that we in the future potentially see as partners for our technologies. If we move forward for the next year and look into what is important there, we continue to prioritize IDO8 and the clinical trial for that. That is a plan that is rolled out already now. But a very important change since last presentation is also that we are accelerating the development of IDOT, which is one of the reasons for our uh, rights issue that we're launching right now. So looking into IDO8, preclinical studies will be performed uh, during the early 2021. We are making detailed planning of our phase one, phase two study. We are also planning the submission of a clinical trial application for ID8 in June. Manufacturing should start, as well as the study start in the second half of 2021. For IDOT, we are accelerating the development and we are now starting to adapt the transplantation indication to our technology platform. This is a very important step for us. We have received a lot of interest for this indication from potential partners and this is the reason why we want to speed up this process. We will initiate preclinical studies for IDOT as well as setting up a very good advisory board for this development phase. And as I said earlier, we are also extending our business development and partnering discussions over the upcoming year also, which is an important thing to do in the phase where we are now. So if we summarize uh, IDN at the time being, we are well advanced uh, and we have a clear strategy ahead. We have a proof of proven proof of principle cell therapy. We have a proprietary technology that is able to give us market exclusivity until 2040. We have a strong partner uh, with high quality large scale production. And we aim at clinical readiness and to start the clinical trial in the second half of 2021. And at the same time, we are building relations, relations for future partnership for further development. So, uh, looking into what happens now, starting today, that is the subscriptions for units in our rights issue starting today. And you will find more information about this on our website www.idrogen.com and subscription period is from now and until December 1. Thank you. Thank you Anders. It's very good that you ended on the rights issue there because my first question is about the rights issue. How come you decided to carry this rights issue out right now? I think there is many reasons but the main thing is yes we need to accelerate IDO8. 
make sure we are able to start the clinical trial in second part of 2021, but also the interest we have seen on the transplantation indication brings us to the decision, yes, we need to do it now, and we need also to develop things in parallel. So, so this is, as you say, the two main things. Parallel with that, which has also been prioritized before, is the business development part. That, that is also a, a critical thing for moving forward, I should say. Yeah, because one of your aims is to increase the focus on developing academic and commercial partnerships. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Yes, I mean, we have a technology platform, uh, which is so say, a very valuable asset. Uh, we can apply different indications, IDO8, IDO-T, but then you also have several opportunities within the IDO-AID area. And what we see for the time being is we see a lot of different opportunities to connect with leading pharma companies, other players to learn more, but also to create commercial partnerships in the future. So, so we are at the critical phase where we now need to initiate more discussions, but also to, to share where we are and, and update the, the partners that we already have discussed with. So, so that's, that's the reason. If we uh, finally zoom out a little bit and look at the cell therapy area as a whole, how would you say that the competitive landscape looks? Do you have any direct competitors, for example, to your platform? If you start with the first question, the, 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 the landscape as such, I mean, this market is booming. I should say that uh, um, cell therapy is here to stay. Uh, cell therapy will increase in number of registrations in the upcoming years. There will be an infrastructure of this kind of, of technology in the future. So that is the good thing. Uh, looking into competitive uh, competitions, I, I think that uh, yes, there is a lot of activities out there. Uh, we believe in our technology and we have applied for, for patent uh, for our specific technology. And we believe in that. So, so what we're saying is that yes, there is competition out there, but we trust that we have a good solution to create tolerance in these patients. I mean, think this is a, a very, very interesting achievement mm. if we can take our technology into that. Yeah. So, so if that is an answer. That I is hope. an answer. I'm happy with that. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, Cecilia. <laughs> Thank you, Anders, for coming.